Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode. In this episode, I'm going to discuss with you top secret of successful tomato farmers. They will never tell you about. What? Top secret. And why I'm sharing the top secret? I share this because I believe sharing is caring. So I care for you guys. That's why I'm bringing this free agriculture education. I want you guys to grow tomato without needing a lot of supervision from agronomists or any sellers. Once you see people posting, they post high yield like this, but they will never tell you how they get, which input, which technique they are using. This video is for you. I'm going to share with you from the starting, once we store drip irrigation, what we do. First, we double check. We check the water. Is the water flowing from the main source from the beginning of the farm to the end. And then we open the water and we flush. We flush to remove this red soil and the impurity inside the drip. So once we do that, we see the clean water, we believe that our plant are going to get what we are feeding them. So checking is very important. Another way to check is, once you put the, open the water, check the drops. How to check, put the cup from the beginning of your feed and the end of your feed. See the drop, see the volume, the amount of water you get are equal. If you get the amount are equal from the center, from the beginning and from the end. So three points, you are sure that the water flowing is uniform, which means any plant that you are putting, they are going to get whatever nutrient and the irrigation design that you are planning or scheduling to feed your plant. Once you do that, guys, you are sure that you are going to expect what you are feeding. Um, another secret I want to share with you is this Epsom salt. Oh, is it same table salt? No, guys, this is not table salt. It is magnesium sulfate. Very important for root development. And this one is very, it is neutral. It doesn't affect the pH of your soil. And it also prevents the nutrient deficient and they make more nutrient available for your plant. That's why we apply this once we start transplanting. That's why you see we use our hand. It's almost like a table salt. This is the thing that we never even had or seen. And once you start transplanting, first the number of work or manpower you need. You need someone to do spacing, to measure the plant spacing, and another person to dig the hole for planting your seedling another person to hold the tray, and a two person to pour your Epsom salt or magnesium sulfate to your soil. Why we are doing this, we want to have root development in early stage, like developing some airs, which will be helping to hold some nutrients, you know, nutri root nutrient uptake from the soil to the upper part of the plant. And this magnesium sulfate help also to make the plant look green and uh, more haste. That's why you see these people pouring water and another people putting some seedling. How we are going to know the soil inside? Yes, there is this technology, rapid soil test guys. There is different kind of rapid soil test. There is this digital one, it gives you number. More equipment you will find rapid soil test. They show you the scale, but this it's giving you the number. There is fertility, and there is pH, and there is temperature. So guys, we can know the pH of inside the soil, the temperature inside the soil. The fertility, one to three, meaning that you have less fertility. You need to add fertilizer. But from three to five, or three to more, you have enough nutrient. And the pH, it depends what kind of crops. Most of pH start from 6.5 up to even 7 or 5.5 up to 7 depend kind of the fertility the ph or crop you have for tomato with like this fertility is 5 so it's good and the ph is 60.8 is closer to neutral it's still good that's why you see the plant look green and the health so you can learn more about it. this equipment digital three-way analyzer because Three way, which means it analyzes fertility, pH, and the temperature. When you come to disease and insects, once you see you have problem like this, so how to avoid these problems? 
to happen. So first of all, you need to attach this trap. This, there is yellow trap for white fry and uh, aphid. This guy doesn't control white fry or aphid. It's just showing you that you, you have the presence of aphid. And the yellow stick, it is for thrips. There is some this, uh, insects called thrips. So once you see them, so you know which recommendation of food chemical fertilizer you will need to apply like the, this one this is a white fly so you know you have white fly in your feed you apply a certain insecticide so to avoid other disease like uh, 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 I mean like uh, virus so that's important this guy doesn't control it just show you if you want to control with this yellow sticker you need to have very big like a paper that you can lap around your feed and we have this rua. You see this one. This is rua. Oh, it is pheromone. It attracts insects. The male insect. So the male insect, like Tutab soda, they feed this uh, uh, aroma or the smell far away. So they come. They think there is female. So they go for mating. And the white you see inside the water is just normal water mixed with soap. So. It does need to have like chemicals it's because the purpose of this water is that because the insects they have wings once they come here to find the mating while they're fighting they fall down once they fall the wings socks so that they cannot fry anymore so they will end up dying so putting like soap it help also to break their body and disintegrate so it help in a kind of reducing or killing this is pheromone and also once you have like dead plant or weed plant to know what kind of weed for expert they know this is the bacteria because the leaf still green if it's yellow you know this is fusarium so if you don't know you need to uproot your plant careful wash it and then you can do some tips with the help of agronomist in your areas or you can take to the lab this uh, Pathologist, they will tell you what the problem and they will give recommendation. Some people ask me from the previous episode what kind of food the staking material are using. We are using the wood material. First, guys, you need to find the, or to ask the local people to tell which wood is resistant for termite and rotting. You can put any woods and the kind of wood, just you put some wood, you make T shape, you put some nail at the center, and you make some edge here like arc here where you can hang or tie your wire without dropping down so this is how we do you see from the top to down where we put if you have access or you can buy the posts like metal post that coated with aluminum it's good for you some people they don't think it's a good idea to do this investment while you're growing in open feed we are growing in open feed while we are limited to all conditions that we can find in greenhouse. Trust me guys, this technology we are using here in open feed, it's playing a lot. Sometimes it's do better than in, inside the greenhouse, depending on your location. And you can see you can grow in a large feed and the return is big compared in the greenhouse. However, the greenhouse have more advantage because you are in a charge, but with expert or knowledge that i'm providing you guys i believe also you can grow outside especially when you have some kind of tomato that they are growing tall this tomato that you cannot determine the rent that's why we call it in a determinate right of tomato they grow to the end so this one you put this kind of staking material so if you missed the previous episode of um, uh, transplanting and management please go there you will see how you are going to alternate this string while you are using this kind of food staking material so if you go there i explain a lot and even if you didn't go there and if you don't have that time i think from this video you can see which kind of material they're using after four meters one post so when we come to the this bush variety tomato or the type of tomato that we can determine the growth they are short you grow this for one season so and this one does need a lot of food pruning how we stake just we use some string so we put the tomato at the center we stake it we we, we wrap 
one line of string or ropes and then once the tomato grow we keep wrapping so you can have like four line or four layers of string where you keep your tomato at the center so this is how you can use for this kind of tomato when you are growing this bushy variety so you can see staking material is different you don't use wire here so you can see layer different layer and this tomato you just harvest once some farmer they cannot afford to cultivate in using the the style or uh, the tiny type of tomato they use this one for one season where they are growing a big field but this one you just grow for one season but once you grow the, the indeterminate type of tomato from the one i showed you you're going to have it for more one for more than one season so in a large feed so you can grow this the juice technique of staking short one not a very big one so when you come to the this kind of tomato you can see this one the one they grow like in greenhouse they grow very tall they have many crusts you see guys they are creamy down why because we the tomatoes are big enough so we need it to start ripening how to facilitate this one should we sup, uh, apply the sulfur or oh, you don't need to do that you have these natural tips that you can do you cut leaves not branches guys you cut leaves you count two to three leaves because these leaves are still green which means they're still making taking light and convert it to carbohydrate which will be used for food for this fruit guys so do not over prune just two to three leaves just to make opening so the temperature can rise there and also remove chances of food animal pests like vertebrate like rodents to eat your tomato and also make a space not having some harboring insect and a disease to destroy your tomato while the tomato reached the maturity or time to be picked this is the reason why you can cut and make it clean you see tomato three four cluster five cluster and there's still more six seven and there's still more flower coming eight nine so you can see guys this tomato they grow very tall so you can see there is no branches it's just one stem of tomato and it gives you more than eight clusters so you can have nine to ten harvest with this and you're not going to harvest in one season you can you can see there is flowering and from down there is tomato that they are near to be harvested that's why there is advantage of growing this one this one is if you ask some people they'll tell you, oh there is no way you can grow this in open field guys with this one you can see you can grow this in open field and you can achieve the high yield like this the purpose i'm making this free agriculture video available for you i want you to grow this kind of tomato and get or earn more income with this tomato so you solve the problem of food security and the food nutrition and also you improve your life through agriculture without investing a lot because the cost of greenhouse is guys is very expensive that one i cannot lie it needs long investment but I want to tell you guys this one is possible that's why I'm giving this top secret of successful tomato farmers for you for free if you find guys this video is useful in one way or another don't forget guys to subscribe and also to share so that this one can reach more friends and once you have many people growing this one so that you can learn if you miss something you can learn from your colleague that you shared this free agriculture video thank you for watching guys see you in another episode bye